Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher, Director of Product Optimization here at Sweetwater Sound, and today I'm very proud to show you the new DeepMind 12 by Behringer. It's a 12 voice true analog synthesizer, each voice having two DCOs, two LFOs, a VCF, a VCA, a high pass filter, and three envelopes per voice. There's also an arpeggiator and a sequencer and many, many more things underneath as well. And at this price point, it is just simply amazing. It, uh, I, I can't say enough about the synth. And uh, I've been playing with it for a little while now and every single time I get to it, I'm discovering something else. So I'll show you some of the parameters uh, and then I'm mostly gonna just play it so you can hear what this thing can do. All right, so the first thing we're gonna look at are the oscillators. They are DCOs, which stands for Digitally Controlled Oscillator. Um, although it is digitally controlled, the output of that oscillator is true analog. In fact, once you go from the oscillator, through the filter, through the VCA, uh, and the high pass filter, you are in a completely analog path. And even though the effects are digital, uh, they can be fully bypassed or put in an insert mode so that the true analog signal gets all the way to the end and the effects are either bypassed or just added to the signal. So on the first oscillator, DC01, I have sliders for pitch modulation as well as pulse width modulation, and then a choice of sawtooth wave and square pulse width modulation wave. So I hit the saw, I get a saw, and I saw display on that, and I can go from the lowest octave, which is very, very low, and I can go even higher from the panel. Uh, and an interesting thing about the, how the panel works, instead of having th this many knobs, uh, we basically have the most important knobs and sliders on the front panel and an edit button. But it's not just one edit button with lots of deep menu diving. Each section has its own dedicated edit button. And when you hit that, it jumps directly to the parameters you most need for that. So for example, when I hit edit, I'm at oscillator one parameters. And so I can continue. And then I have 24 steps of pitch bend and right out of the range of human hearing. So it's very exciting. So um, come back down and you can also double press the octaves, which is very cool, I love that feature. And you come back to standard octave. And you can directly do pitch modulation. So like I have an LFO set up here with triangle wave. And there are all kinds of choices about whether those LFOs are in sync, in phase, uh, whether they're playing monophonically so that they all share the same LFO, uh, or whether they each have their own. And then you can even set like how much phase is off on each of the LFOs. It's, it's really amazing. So back to Sawtooth. And then I have Square. And then I, I can sweep through the pulse width of that. And you can have both. Oscillator 2 gives you a few more parameters on the front panel. You've got um, level, then a tone mod, which is uh, just doing some really interesting timbral things. Notice that everything that I move, every one of these sliders that I move, uh, typically is one of the many, many, many uh, modulation destinations. So if I can move it by hand, chances are real good you can move it by an LFO, an envelope, a wheel, aftertouch, velocity, etc. And then I have uh, pitch, being able to go an octave up and an octave down on DCO2. <laughs> and I can do detuning with that, I can do intervals. So for example, if I turn the sawtooth back on on oscillator one. Um, I also have oscillator sync on oscillator two. So now as I change the pitch, I'm getting uh, that very cool hard sync sound. Again, can be controlled by envelopes or 
aftertouch or wheels or anything you want. Um, and then uh, there are just many, many more parameters that we're going to go into detail in shorter videos, but just check out on the page that, you know, there's just lots of things of wheel to this and aftertouch to this, what the source, so even my sliders that do pulse width can be set up to be manual or the depth of some other modulation source like LFO1, LFO2, envelopes. And uh, so very, very powerful. And then the last thing that you have is a noise. And we'll go through and, and play with the filter with noise in a bit. So now over on the filter side, I've got uh, either a two-pole or four-pole resonant filter. And I have sliders for both frequency and resonance. And then with some resonance. So clearly it's self oscillating um, and has a very high frequency range as well. And then if I do the same thing, I'll, I'll play a little more complex chord and uh, I'll use the uh, hold feature, which I really appreciate. You just hold that button for a moment, it lights up, and then anything you hit stays. So that's in four pole mode. Uh, now I'm going to bring the resonance down. I'll do the same sweeps on two pole. You can hear that as you're closing up the filter, you've got the higher frequencies still present more so than in the four pole. And the resonance definitely sounds different as well. So then on the VCA, I've just got uh, something that's labeled plus five, minus five. It just helps you balance patches. It, like almost everything else, is also a modulation destination, so you can do tremolo through there. Um, then I have a high pass filter. And um, usually synths that give you an additional high pass filter, they work manually like this one does. But since it is also a modulation destination, you can assign an envelope to it or a modulation source in LFO, a wheel, after touch anything. So um, it really is a, a much more powerful high pass filter than I was expecting. So I'm really happy to see that. And then underneath that is a boost. It's a 12 dB bass boost. And um, for people who, when they use some resonance, they are unhappy about losing some bass, which is kind of part of resonance, but um, you can get that back. the bass boost. And then the section on the far right is the envelopes. Uh, it's a standard ADSR, um, but they have a clever setup here where using these three buttons you get to choose whether you're currently modifying the voltage controlled amplifier, the voltage controlled filter, or the mod. And the mod is just an envelope that can be assigned to anything. So it's, it's very cool to have a third one like that. Um, so the VCA works very typical, you know. really nice long decay time as well as a very long attack time. They also go obviously very short. Short enough that you can't hear it. <laughs> At least I can't hear it on my speakers. That's snappy. Um, but there's more, just wait. So on top of a regular ADSR, you also have continuous control over the curve, um, either linear or exponential or what they're calling reverse exponential. So 
in terms of, let's say we're gonna set up an attack time here, and, and we'll have just kind of a, uh, a very quick attack. Then I hit this curve button. Now each of these four sliders controls the curve for that particular segment of the ADSR. So here is the attack time, leaving the attack where it was, but now linear. Now, up to the top here, here's a different shape where it's, it's not an immediately climbing, and it's climbing faster toward the end of the curve. Then if I go the opposite way, now I have a more quick initial hit, followed by a little slowing off before it gets to its maximum. And as I turn the attack time up more, this will become more obvious. So now it's a slower attack time, and we'll go to, again, linear. Very cool that you can do that. And the ability to do that for attack and decay and release is great. And as you probably see from the display, it's drawing the envelopes for you as well as giving you both their attack, decay, sustain, release value and the curve value for each of them. Um, so as I change attack time, you're seeing that, but now watch as I change the curve of the attack. Very cool. And then if I have decay, I can modify the decay curve as well. Let me get the sustain down. And now you'll see modifying the curves. And, and it's a very significant sound, whether you're doing it slowly or quickly. When you're doing it kind of medium like I'm doing now, it's sort of helping decide whether the energy is being lost toward the beginning of the segment or the energy is being lost more toward the end. And each has its own reasons. Uh, when you're doing really fast envelopes, it changes the quality of the clickiness and how it sounds as a percussion device. So all three of those having curves on the attack, decay, and release are amazing. But then they go one step farther and they let you adjust a value for sustain, which is doing something different. So I'm going to make a, an envelope here where it's kind of quick and then goes to silence on the sustain. But now as I push up the curve on sustain, you'll see that I can even bring it back up. So it's just really neat to have yet one more parameter. Also, the envelopes can be set to either trigger when you press a key or be triggered by LFO1. So now you have envelopes that are repeatedly triggered at the speed of an LFO. And since the LFO can be linked to clock at any subdivision, uh, that gives you tremendous power. Same with LFO2. And the final one, loop, basically lets the envelope finish its entire cycle, then starts over again. And so you're kind of adjusting uh, the shape of this loop as well as the length of time it takes to go through each loop. So here's, I'm slowing down because I'm increasing decay time. And then I can dictate how long it takes before the loop starts over by increasing the release time. I have all of those same features for the VCF, as well as the mod, which can work for uh, pretty much anything you can assign. And we're gonna talk more about that assignment in a second. Okay, now just a few more sections and I'll get right into playing, I promise. Uh, but the poly section um, allows you to do a bunch of things having to do with the oscillators. First of all, you get to choose between polyphonic, monophonic, but then you have all these variations where you can have unison. So now I'm using two oscillators and, I, and my unison to tune slider. And because you have 12 notes, unison two still means that you have six notes of polyphony and those six notes of polyphony now effectively have four oscillators each. So I'm just using a plain sawtooth wave here with filters wide open and still you can hear the depth.
Then you have your priority, so you can have last note or the highest note or the lowest note. You have envelope retriggers, whether things retrigger if you hit a second key while you're holding the first key. Uh, we have oscillator drift, which just does a beautiful things over time, and you can set the rate of the drift and then parameter drift, which means that every single parameter moves. And I'll show you patches where that just creates these amazingly lush patches. If I hit the edit button again, I get to the second page. I've got a transpose, portamento time, which you can also do from the portamento knob, different portamento modes, whether they're fingered or fixed rate, exponential, fixed fingered. Um, I have oscillator balance for the portamento. I have pitch bend range, which can go plus or minus 24 steps, which is two octaves. Uh, then I have a global tune. And then hitting the edit button again takes me back out. Um, you can see the, the unison to tune is shown graphically like this. And, just very cool, all the different things you can see in real time. And then finally on the end, I have an arpeggiator, um, which has many, many features. We're going to do a whole video just on that, uh, as well as a control sequencer. Now, why is it called a control sequencer? Well, you can assign it to pitch, but you can also assign it to any parameter uh, using the uh, modulation matrix. So um, real quick on that, you just hit the mod button. Here we have eight different assignments and of that, you have something like 22 sources with both positive and negative depths to go to something like 122 different destinations, everything from uh, pitch of oscillator one, pitch of oscillator two, but the rates of things, the, the speeds of envelopes, um, uh, pulse width depth, attack times, curves, uh, panning. Um, so really powerful stuff, even noise level. Uh, so all of that obviously can be synced to clock. Um, you can set your arpeggiators to be anything from one to six octaves. You can go up, down, up and down, inverted, alternative, chords, random, uh, lots of stuff like that. You have a hold feature, which I've shown you, which will hold your arpeggiation. Uh, that button is also a tap tempo, which I just love having a tap tempo button on the front. Um, you can also set the rates manually. They, they also show up on the screen, very large. Um, you have swing, and then you have patterns. And you can do these amazing patterns that you have both presets and user patterns. Um, crazy stuff. So now let's just start playing this thing. So one of the first patches I made just for fun um, this one I call Kung Fu Flashback, if you remember the 70s movie, when you'd remember he was, what he did when he was a teenager. Um, and uh, it's basically just using lots of randoms. I wanted to see uh, how smoothly I could move different parameters. And if you look in the effects section, I'm in bypass mode, which means we're not using any effects at all. And that's one of the cool things about having lots of polyphony is release time can become your effect. So if I just start playing some of those notes again, watch what happens as I change release time. to polyphony is a, is a wonderful thing. So let's try some more patches. And as I always try to do with synthesizers uh, as a test, I, I try to make a jazz guitar. And this one came out really nice. And here's some modulation. I'm using square wave modulation against 
uh, sawtooth modulation. And then, of course, I have to do this on every synth I put my hands on. random. Um, here's one that I just wanted to see what would happen with uh, long evolving envelopes and uh, slow changes over time. Notice that I have effects on, but I'm using an insert mode, um, which means that everything is going 100% through the effects, and my mix levels are setting how much of the dry signal I'm hearing. Now I'm just going to play some of the presets that are currently on the unit and um, I'll discover them at the same time you will.
day and after we turn the cameras off I will but uh, if you have any further questions about the DeepMind 12 please call your Sweetwater sales engineer my name is Daniel Fisher thank you very much for listening